know when you're ready back there. Now we have to go back to regular cable. We're Are never late. Eyes, huh? This is embarrassing, Mr. and Mrs. Manlove. We're never late. <laughs> All rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everybody. We had a... Um, uh, executive session before the start of tonight's regular meeting regarding some personnel matters. First item on our agenda is I am proud to introduce to Doylestown Township, if you don't already know, um, William B. Manlove, Jr. He is here with his lovely wife of how many years? A couple. 57, <laughs> 57 uh -huh. years. Doylestown Township residents, and we, the Board of Supervisors, would like to issue this proclamation on behalf of um, William B. Manlove, and if, with your permission, I'm going to read it. This is a proclamation of the Doylestown Township Board of Supervisors recognizing William B. Manlove, Jr. for being inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. Whereas William B. Manlove, Jr. is a resident of Doylestown Township, whereas William B. Manlove, Jr. is the former head football coach at Delaware Valley College, at where he helped to develop a winning season and now serves as the assistant football coach, whereas was the most winning football coach at Widener University in his 32 years as head coach, where he had led the Widener University football team to 10 Middle, Middle, Middle Atlantic Conference championships, seven NCAA tournament appearances, and four undefeated regular seasons. Under his leadership, the Widener University football team won NCAA Division III championships in 1977 and 1981. Whereas William B. Manlove, Jr., as head coach at LaSalle University, helped resurrect the football program at LaSalle University um, that had been in hibernation since, since 1941. And whereas William B. Manlove, Jr., was honored as Mid-Atlantic um, Coach of the Year nine times, named American Football Coaches Association Division Two and Three National Coach of the Year in 1977, and the Regional District Coach of the Year in 1977 and 1980. Whereas Man, uh, William B. Manlove, Jr., was inducted into Camden County Sports Hall of Fame and the Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame in 2009. And whereas Mr. Manlove served as president of the American Football Coaches Association as a member of the Board of Trustees and was named the National Football Federation Philadelphia's Chapter Distinguished American Award. And whereas Mr. Manlove was elected to the College Football Hall of Fame and formally inducted in July 2011 in a ceremony held in South Bend, South Bend Indiana. So, therefore, now it be proclaimed that the Doylestown Township Board of Supervisors recognizes and congratulates William B. Manluff, Jr. for being inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame and thanks, um, thanks him for his many years of distinguished service to youth and athletics and for your service to the Doylestown Township community. Sounds like the Philadelphia Eagles can use you. That's right. Yeah. Can you, call, can you play defense? Let me first off say thank you to the township. This is a great honor. Uh, for a guy who always just really wanted to be a high school football coach, being one of the 200-some-odd coaches who were in the College Football Hall of Fame, it's, it's really overwhelming to, to be tell the truth. Uh, and I certainly am very appreciative of that. But to be honored by the town that you consider your hometown after living here almost 20 years is, is even more so. And I'm very humbly thankful to you for that. And, again, I thank you. And we're, from behalf of my wife and I, again, I'll say thank you very much. You know now you're not allowed to ever move out of Doylestown Township. That's, that's part of it. <laughs> oh, you have a lovely home, so we want you to stay. And you don't have to stay for the rest of the meeting, but you're more than welcome to. Um, and the, yeah, I mean, your excuse. Thank you. Okay. Um, visitors and public comment? So long, anime.
Good evening. Hi. Hi. I'm Sean Tuhill. I'm a resident in Doylestown. Um, I, uh, tonight, I'm just here to, just for a bit of information um, to, to give to the board. Uh, we have, um, back in, I guess, January of 2011, a uh, group of residents, um, honestly all neighbors for the most part, uh, over in Pine Run Valley, um, got together. Uh, it was over the holidays and that. Anyhow, uh, they decided to get uh, to start something to do with the cleaning the creeks and such. I think I, I may, may have mentioned this before, maybe to one of you. But uh, that said, uh, that developed into the Doylestown Creek Coalition, uh, working with uh, the Doylestown EAC and the Heritage Conservancy. Um, we've been working with them. They've done, obviously, numerous studies on the creek, both Pine Run and the Chamonix. Um, we wanted to just get our no pun intended, feet wet with the Pine Run. And uh, so we started this past September. We've, we've been on uh, September 8th, 15th, I'm looking at my calendar, and the 22nd, we've done three stream cleanups of the Pine Run, a cooperation with the residents and uh, the neighbors along, along the creek. Um, surprisingly, uh, well, actually, you would not believe what we found. Um, and we've got, uh, we managed, we took th at least three truckloads on our first trip, uh, two and another, uh, truckloads, pickup truckloads. Um, but that said, um, I have to assume a lot of that's from a lot of the flooding we've had over this year with maybe the hurricanes and such. But we've had, first we've, we'd find one tire, then two, then three, then four, and we're looking for the other parts of the car eventually. Cause, yeah. You know, it starts to piece it together. But um, so while in, um, you know, uh, on the surface, in Pine Run in particular, looks pretty uh, neat and clean. Um, there's certainly uh, more needed, uh, if, if possible. Uh, we have intended, we intend in the second week in October, and although it's going to be a little chillier, we have planned a, a, a trial riparian buffer planting. Um, and um, the riparian buffer is made up of, it's, if this is necessary to describe what that is, or? No, you we guys, don't Okay, understand. okay. But, but um, yeah. But um, that said, working with the nursery out of out in uh, Octorero, uh, PA, at uh, Quarryville, PA, uh, we've coordinated with to get some native plantings in. And uh, want, you know, really, once folks know that it's not more expensive to try to do something uh, with the native plants uh, rather than mowing down to the creek, um, it's obviously a lot more beneficial as well. And uh, so we're looking forward to that planting. We're not going to go into the creek that that day. We've already gone in with our waders and found. Those especially that are old and dry rotted, how they leak uh, this past weekend. But anyhow, uh, it's just a, it's some information that we did. Uh, and we're looking forward to working again with the Conservancy in the spring and the Scouts, too. Uh, Troop 52 helped us in the past, and Pac-52 Cub Scouts uh, are going to be working with us. So we've got photos and that. I said to Sandra, maybe we could get, give some of those in, okay. show what we did and what we found. You know. Thank you very much. All right, that's, that's it. Good stuff. All right. Thank you. Good night. Appreciate it. It. Keep fishing. Keep fishing. <laughs> And tell your neighbors we appreciate their the work that they're doing, Sean. Tell them, tell your neighbors that we appreciate it. Thank you, Scouts. They, really, uh, they don't, well, they don't mind. Scouts is fun. We're going to get money. Wet but yeah, I don't. Thank you. <laughs> Some of the adults might like that too. That <laughs> muddy, wet fun. That's fun. <laughs> when it's warmer, at least. Yeah. <laughs> Not that it's cold. No. Mm -mm. Any other comments? Um, announcements. Our next meeting is Tuesday, October 18, 2011. We're going to be meeting. We're going to be meeting with the Ways and Means Committee. But our first budget work session officially is this uh, is this Thursday um, at 2 p.m. here, Thursday, October 6. But that will that first budget session will be um, with the Ways and Means Committee as well as the, all the supervisors. Our next, um, the Dawson Township Board of Supervisors will intend, and we have a road inspection on October 6th, which is also Thursday at 4 p.m. Um, we're going to be closed on October 10th for Columbus Day. The leaf and yard waste recycling for October 15th um, uh, will be held 9 to 11 at Central Park, and it's for our residents only. Halloween is October 22nd, 10 to 12. 12:30, and I assume Cynthia will be there emceeing. I, I will be judging all Halloween. those fabulous people and their pets. 10 to 12:30 at Central Park. And um, got drugs, turn in your unused and expired uh, um, medications for safe disposal. October 29th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Dothan Township <coughs> Municipal Building. Um, October is Fire Safety Month, so the Red Cross, and we're going to cooperate with the Red Cross in collecting 9-volt batteries for, um, what do we call those, um, smoke detectors. 
Also, tomorrow, Wahoo, we're at 1 o'clock, will be the official opening of Wells Road. Anyone's welcome to come, but just park up here or, or in the township um, off, uh, parking lot so not everybody's on Wells Road when it's open. So keep your cars <laughs> off the road. So 1 o'clock, about Radcliffe Street. Right. Okay, any correspondence? Minutes. Minutes. Thank you for keeping Move for approval. Second. Any questions, comments, revisions? Just misspellings. Oh. Well, right. Do you have one? I just misspellings, that's all. Minor things. Okay, this is really minor too, but it's on page five. Uh, the one, two, three, four. Fifth line down, I think do it, it, where it says Doylestown Township set the precedent. The other word might work, but I think it should be precedent for Bucks County in the fifth line. Thanks. Prescience. Prescience. Oh, we're very prescient here. <laughs> <laughs> or prescience. <laughs> okay. Change that word. Anything else? No, yeah, that was it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now, correspondence. None. None. <laughs> Solicitor. Sorry. I do want to advise the board and the public about some recent developments <laughs> with respect to the Liberty Towers application uh, to construct a cell tower in Furlong. The uh, public will recall that the uh, Liberty Towers had submitted an application to the Doylestown Township Zoning Hearing Board seeking a variance to build a cell tower on the narrow lot located next to Cornerstone Fitness. There were several hearings, and the Doylestown Township Zoning Hearing Board concluded that they did not meet the criteria for the grant of a variance, so they denied the application. As you would expect, the applicant filed an appeal uh, with the Court of Common Pleas of Bucks County from that denial. But in addition to that, they filed a separate proceeding in federal court alleging that the action in failing to approve the variance had the effect of denying or effectively denying cell tower capacity or coverage within the township. So we recently received that. We sent it off to the appropriate carriers. So we will be, the township will be aggressively defending the zoning hearing board and the residents of Furlong on two fronts beginning very shortly. So I wanted the board and the public to understand what's happened. Okay, thank you. Anything else? That's all I have. Uh, <clears throat> The, the board asked me at the last meeting to get some information about the Jake Breaks and the uh, possible pro prohibition of using Jake Breaks. Uh, Jake Breaks are, are, are it's a, uh, a word from a Jacobs vehicle system uh, that is actually uh, an, a mechanical device within the engine that creates a, a torque that retards the, the forward motion of a vehicle, a diesel vehicle. And the truckers will use this in order to slow down. And uh, but actually, it, it should be referred to as a, as a as a uh, producing. A, it should be referred to as uh, a brake retarding system. And and some of the newer vehicles have it actually built into the the truck, and uh, they are not accessible. That the the truck driver could uh, may get to it to be able to disengage it if they were in there. The, the Pennsylvania Code requires that if the township is going to consider uh, passing an ordinance that they first uh, must get permission from PennDOT uh, to, to even install the, the signs. PennDOT would do a, a traffic and engineering study. The township would be required to purchase, install, and maintain the signs for the life of the signs. Uh, I spoke to Quaker Town, Newtown Township, Quaker Town Borough, Newtown Township, and Doylestown Borough. Uh, the problems that occur is that an enforcement issue, if you were taking the violation because the noise was generated by the brake retarding system, it could be taken under the township ordinance. If the v noise was actually not the brake retarding system, but it was a faulty muffler or they were bypassing the muffler, it would have to be taken under the vehicle code. Uh, therefore, the person actually enforcing the violation, in my mind, would have to be one of our two uh, truck safety inspectors that are certified in the, in the actual examination of a, of a truck. Uh, the other problem that, that would occur is the braking system is actually used to slow a vehicle down. And the other area of concern would be that if there was an accident and the, and the truck uh, with this system 
was an involved vehicle and there was an injury or death, uh, the township could needlessly be brought into a lawsuit uh, because the argument would be that I, I may have been able to stop if I would have been able to use my supplemental brake system. So all these things I believe that the, the board should take into consideration. Uh, we have uh, not, to my knowledge, had any complaint anywhere else in the township. And before we know whether this is even a problem on the Route 202 Parkway, uh, the board should consider all the items that I provided to you in the, in the memo that I provided to the board before you decide whether you would like to go forward and ask for a PennDOT traffic and engineering study and for uh, an ordinance to be developed. I don't see any reason for us to go any further with this. Well, I, I, don't I disagree um, respectfully. Uh, we have Morrisville, Bristol Township, Yardley, Newtown Township, Newtown Borough, Quaker Town. All of these places have this in, in place. We have the 202 Parkway, which is going to be opening up. We don't even have the concept as to what the noise is going to be like on there. Granted, it's a parkway. It's supposed to be slower moving, um, slower moving than it would be as a highway. But still, I mean, we as township supervisors should be proactive about protecting our residents, especially when it comes to noise that comes off of all the trucks that are going to be using this instead of being on our side streets, which is hopefully what we're going to be, uh, what's going to be happening with this, um, with the 202 Parkway. Um, I don't, uh, I don't think that doing something like this now is is um, unwarranted. Um, I also uh, disagree with the uh, the lawsuit interpretation. I mean, PennDOT has to approve this this ban. They've approved it for these other communities, and I don't see why Dolestown Township should have to wait until a problem occurs before we we take action. So, uh, I would like to see this move forward. Any other discussion? Just so the board knows, I did speak to Newtown Township. They have never issued a citation under their ordinance in all the years that they've had the, the ordinance in effect for the very reasons that, that I said. Well, we have, I mean, I know we have a lot of ordinances now that are in effect that I'm sure that there is a number of them that we haven't issued anything, whether it be a citation along those lines. Um, well, that but doesn't I, seem to be a reason to create another ineffective ordinance. Just keep the ones we have already. Is that? Uh, we're not talking about the ones we have already. We're talking I don't, about creating another one that I don't may not think be this, enforceable. Well, I think that's an interpretation from the chief. I have a different interpretation of that. Okay. I mean, I, I believe that this is uh, an enforceable ordinance, uh, as I said before. I mean, we're talking about you know the the Jake brakes are utilized for a cost saving measure for the trucking industry. It's not a safety measure. It's it's their brakes. Yes, that's a safety measure. But this is a cost-saving thing for the, the truck itself. And I'm concerned about the residents and the noise that we're going to be having with regard to these roadways. And I think we should be proactive about it. And I'd like to see us do that now versus waiting until something happens. I think Captain that's why I brought it up. Sure. Do you want to come up to the microphone? Uh, Please. There's one over there. What, what you have to say is important, so we want everyone to hear it. Um, Kathy Brown, I live at the corner of Sunset View and New Britain Road. Have um, have to say in a positive way that the construction has been better than anticipated, so that's good. But I have to say that I hear those breaks at my house now, and I am concerned when the parkway opens, how much, not so much that um, they're going to get louder, but obviously more trucks are going to use parkway, so it's, it's going to become more of a nuisance. So if, if the ordinance is not enforceable, is there something else you can do? Can you look into, into something else? I, I hear those, I mean, I, I hear them almost every night, and it's not even open yet. Um, so, yes, I can make sure all my windows are completely shut. Um, but I think it will get worse, and I think it's something that needs to be addressed. Thanks. I would um, also, no, no you're, you're fine. I just, I was going to say as a supplement to what they both said, 
Um, I was just driving through Dublin. I guess it would be Dublin Borough. They have a big sign when you enter Dublin also, <coughs> no brake retarders, retardants, retarding systems or whatever, as you're driving through. And I could only hope that the reason that the places that have that ordinance haven't had to use the ordinance is because maybe <coughs> truckers are looking before they're planning their trips to see where they're allowed to go and where they're not allowed to go. And I don't want to have another billboard incident in Doylestown where we wait till somebody puts one up and then goes, oh, shoot, we should have had an ordinance about that so they couldn't do it. We missed our, our chance on the billboard and somebody put one up and then we had to do an ordinance after the fact. And I agree in the proactive status, we have no idea what this parkway is going to bring to the residents that live along where Kathy lives and everyone else off of New Britain Road. And I think it's our job as supervisors to be proactive for our residents and to enact this type of an ordinance before it's a problem instead of trying to fix it after it's a problem. I mean, I'd like to, I brought it up as kind of a mini motion last time, but I would like to bring it up as a full motion this time that we um, enact uh, a similar <coughs> ordinance uh, that would prevent Jake breaks from being utilized in the areas that I had mentioned previously. I'll second. Your, your actual motion would be to ask PennDOT to conduct the yes, appropriate so study because you can't do an ordinance. Without the PennDOT, right. without the PennDOT uh, approval. And is there a I cost second to it. that? I, I, know, I don't know. I've never been involved in having PennDOT do this. I don't know if there's a cost or there not. There would not be a cost to the study, but if, the, if the, it was approved, it would be cost to the township to purchase, install, and maintain okay. the signs. Uh, Barbara, you have another hand up out here. If you want to know. Hey, just real quick, uh, Sean Tuhill again. Um, does is the proposed ordinance would that be affect merely is it proposed on the bypass or rather on the parkway or is it for the entire township? That would have to be for the entire township. entire township. Is it, was there any is there any thought given to or do we know uh, how would it affect uh, folks like like the folks that plow the plow the roads? I don't mean the township, but I mean like you know through the state roads and such. You know, I know they contract the state contracts sometimes with subcontractors like. I'll name somebody like Sparks or somebody like that, you know, and, and uh, presumably they have um, these systems on their trucks. Would that prohibit those trucks, like in those cases, from, the inter you know what I mean, from being able to plow or any other, any other service trucks or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Would it affect them as well? Or? I mean, if they have them, if we pass the ordinance, I would think they'd have to not use them anymore. Well, you, you, the problem is that the newer diesel trucks, you, the driver does not have access to the, the system to turn it on and off. It is built into the system, so and it, it uses it by itself. It, it's not something that can turn on and off. These have been around since the, the 70s, I believe, or even prior to that, that it was a supplemental system that was placed into the engine, in, and it could be controlled by the driver. Uh, what, what I would suggest is that uh, more study be done as far as how many vehicles that are actually on the roadway, are they a supplemental system, and how many of them are newer vehicles that are built into it? Uh, as it was pointed out to me, fire trucks, newer fire trucks that are diesel powered, have the, the, the brake retarding system built into the engine, where the operator that does, has no control over whatsoever of, of the, and they're barely, they're, there's not a big difference in the, so I mean, it's not something. Well, the, the ordinance, and I, I apologize, Steve, um, if you want to finish, I didn't mean to interrupt, go ahead. I'm sure I made my point. No. <laughs> uh, but the, the ordinance does have an exemption in there for governmental um, and emergency vehicles. So that would be, if we get to the point of the ordinance, that would be in there so that those type of things. So the other, like the service trucks, and that, that might be addressed, presumably. You know, like the snow plowing, I'm talking snow about public 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 just public yeah. vehicles. Did, um, in addition, or, or rather than, you know, this uh, ordinance. Was there any consideration given? I, I think there's a lot of noise that comes from um, more so like the modified muffler systems and that, you know, that you can, everybody sees them on the low rider cars and all that. I don't mean that, but on the larger, larger trucks, you actually do that as an extra. I, that just, the thought is, would this then mushroom into prohibiting those kind of things? I don't, that's you know all, what I mean? That's, already, off on, that's already enforceable under the vehicle code. Right. But the enforcing officer would have to determine is that the, the brake retarding system or is that the bad muffler system? Yeah. And you would only determine that by a, an examination of the truck. Any one of them, okay. All right, thank you. Um, there's a motion on the floor and there's a second. Any other discussion? Calling the question in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. 
Against? Nay. 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 Motion fails. I think we just should wait for this until the parkway is open. We do see if there is a problem and maybe address it at that time. But I think this is too premature at this time. I agree with Tom. I agree. I see no township engineer. I assume there's no report. Manager? Yes. We have a request from Karen for training. In lieu of her attending the NRPA conference this year, she would like to attend the upcoming event management school. This is presented in partnership with the National Recreation Park Society and international festivals. This is an event in West Virginia. The board has the Ogilvy National Training Center. It is an overnight stay, so it does need to come before the board. She does have the money in her budget this year and would recommend that she have the opportunity to attend this. As the board knows, we do a number of events, and that's an area that Karen always oversees in some of our larger events and also looking at ways to do fundraising and bring money to the township through the recreation programs and the events that we run. And so, therefore, I would recommend that she be able to attend this week-long school. Is there a motion? I'll move. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Did I hear you vote? I said aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We'll pass on web streaming. Birdtown. Birdtown. Is that for real? We have Keith Peters from the Environmental Advisory Council. Just kidding, Keith. And there is a memo. Do you know Birdland? Yes, I do know Birdland. It's not the jazz song. And not the birds. It's somewhat akin to that. In the sense that we're hoping the supervisors will approve the enrollment of the township in the Audubon Society of Pennsylvania's Birdtown program. We have asked to partner with Doylestown Borough on this because birds don't necessarily recognize the township versus the borough border. And there are a lot of benefits that we feel this program would offer to the residents of the township, some of which you heard earlier from Sean about the riparian buffer issue and so forth. So we think that it would be along the lines of the Tree City USA to have Doylestown Township join the Birdtown program. And what is the Birdtown program? It's a series of educational opportunities and a website that the Audubon Society runs that allows users to make their habitat, make their yards more attractive to birds. Obviously, birds are sentinel or considered sentinel creatures in the sense that we get an idea of the pollution or the relative health of the society or the area, the environment, by the bird population. So this would be very good for them. We have a number of bird fans in the township. Ray Hendricks is the ornithologist. He's been a big advocate of this, as a number of people in the EAC have been also. And it encourages the use of monitoring how your house uses energy and appliances and how it takes care of stormwater runoff, a large part of impervious surface calculations and so forth. So residents can get as involved as they want to be, and they can be educated as much as they want to be, and we can include things in our township newsletter to have people become sensitive to that. Do you have any program from Doylestown TV? Not yet, but we talked about we're trying to do all those things, not web streaming yet, but with Doylestown TV, we do the Water's Fury thing on EAC hour, if I can plug the 6 to 7 p.m. EAC hour every night. And this would be tied in with that in the sense that it helps manage stormwater. Okay, great. Newtown Township did this about six months ago, and EAC and residents have been excited about putting up bluebird boxes and to sort of energize people to what they can do on their own lot for that purpose. Yeah. Well, I bought a bunch of flowers, a pot from Bucks Country Gardens, and I didn't know that one of the flowers in that pot attracted hummingbirds. Yeah, hummingbirds. And it's really cool. I had hummingbirds all summer, and I don't think I had ever seen a hummingbird in person. You can go out and hum with them now, can't you? But it was just that one bit of flower on my back patio, and I had hummingbirds. I went, oh, my God. I thought it was a huge insect, and it wasn't. It was like a bird. It was very cool. So you're absolutely right. A little bit of education goes a long way. I think it's a great idea because of the fact of the cost, first of all. We're talking of a $450-a-year cost, 
and the bar is going to split it, so it costs us $225, which we have the money in the budget already under the uh, stormwater management program. And I think this just adds to another cog in the wheel, as we have done with our tree city. We've won that every year for, what, 15 years at least or more. And I think this is something that uh, will just give us another edge on that. And I'm willing to make a motion that we approve this. Uh, bird. Uh, Second. Bird. Birdland. Birdland. Bird town. Bird town. to pay. I was going to say Bird City, but I Second. retracted that. Bird. Bird town. So I make a motion that we approve uh, Bird Town for. Uh, the EAC. There's been a second. All in yeah. favor? Aye. Aye. It's Thank you. just a question on the on the cost. Is that an annual cost that's yes, going to be? Yeah. Okay. Two fifty. Yes, it is. We've been working with the Audubon Society to figure out ways to fund this, and they've adjusted their thing, and they've allowed us to partner with the borough to allow us to half the Great. cost many times. So Good yes, job. it is an annual membership fee. Thanks. Thank you. Come and visit again real soon, Keith. We like it. <laughs> Keep good stuff. Thank you. Um, supervisors, any comments from you, Rick? Yes. Uh, to the consternation of many, I'm going to be succinct in my report. It's just a one word I like to use. Okay. Uh, went to the Planning Commission, and the YMCA made a presentation to us at the Planning Commission, and I will then allot the rest of my time over to the why when their time on the agenda comes. That's all I have. Okay. Cynthia? I'm just blown away. <laughs> Success. So, so Success. Sure. Um, I don't have anything. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Tom? Yes, I have one issue. Uh, with all the rain we've been having, tremendous amount of rain, people have been calling me regarding their oil, uh, their, their wells being polluted from the surface water getting in. And, you know, every year we have to have our wells checked along with our septic system. Well, a lot of people have had their septic systems already checked, and I include as one of them. And others uh, are in the process of trying to get their wells, their wells approved and checked and find out they're contaminated uh, because of this tremendous amount of water running into their well and the surface of it. And I'm just wondering what we can do to help uh, maybe lead them in the right direction to get something accomplished, to get this uh, so solved. And, of course, by the end of the year, we have to have our um, wells checked and the information into the township. And maybe Sandra can help me on this, too. Uh, you were listening to the polluted wells. Uh, is there something, because she handles basically internal, internally here, all the uh, reports come in to her from the failed systems or whatever. Well, Bucks County already, they issued a statement, the health department, about this to address the issue that you brought up. And I, I'm pretty sure I put it on our website. Um, if not, it'll definitely be there tomorrow morning okay. um, where residents, they're just, I think they are just recommending to test your well an extra time if you're concerned about it, um, which the health department has the kits for $15. So, and just with our septic management program, if you test it again, you can send it to us. The ordinance is a three-year cycle, so if you test in a year that you don't need to test, you still get credit for it. You just get bumped forward. Like if you test in 2011, you don't have to test again until 2014. So. Okay. Well, I know several people have called me already, and they've already had within the last couple of weeks have had their wells checked, and they yeah. failed. And just they never had failed wells before, and they said their whole neighborhoods are yeah. going like The health this. department also has information on how to clean up your well if there's pollution. So mm -hmm. there's they can. I would just recommend that people call the health department. Okay. Thanks, well, sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Tom? No, that'd be all. I just wanted to um, bring up the uh, sample resolution, which I brought up at the last meeting, and I see that Mr. Garten had... It's, it's on the agenda. It is on the agenda, but I was bringing it up just because I submitted it at the last meeting, so I, instead of it being um, just on the agenda, I thought I could revisit again as um, the person that brought it up in the first place, because we talked about whether we would look at doing that resolution, and I saw that it's on the agenda. I wasn't sure why it wasn't just under supervisor's comments. So do you want to so have it as an action item? item. You well, want to do it now? Go ahead. That's fine. I, it's next on the packet. I just didn't understand why it wasn't back underneath for supervisor comments. I, I had asked at the last meeting mm -hmm. that Mr. Garten maybe prepare something for Doylestown Township that would be similar to the resolution that I submitted before, and I see that he's done that, so I wanted to just bring it back up under 
supervisor comments? All right. You see the resolution that the board voted last time to authorize it be prepared. Has everyone had a chance to read through it? Yes. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Questions, comments, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Anything else, Barb? Just if the township would consider submitting this resolution to Bikato, I would like for it to go to Bikato for the next round of resolutions. Is there consensus for that? Yes. Moving it to Bikato. Tom? Well, I don't know what the Bikato will do with a resolution like this. I mean, they can pass it on to certainly everybody else in the county. It might be too late because the meeting is in October. If we missed it for this round, there are no other counties in Bucks County or municipalities in Bucks County that have approved it. We would be the first in Bucks County. So in order to pass it along to other municipalities through that route, it might just work faster that way. I don't know. Otherwise, I'd just like to, you know, thank everybody for approving it because I think it's a step in the right direction to ask for funding again. I would also suggest you send it to the Conservation District, too, because they're behind this and they might package theirs with this and sort of make it a strictly presentation. Well, I can bring this up to Bikato. In fact, we meet tomorrow. That's a good idea. And I'll just mention that this is in the works. It's something we probably can approve as a group, but with the executive committee. Right. I'll forward it on to their executive director, too, just so they know they have it as well. Okay, thanks. Anything else? No, that was it. Thank you. Okay, I have no report. Under new business or any unfinished business, under new business, the Route 202 Parkway event data video sharing license. Yes, this is going to allow us to access the closed circuit television information that they will have. This could come in handy with our police department in events. Dick has been going to some of the meetings on the operation of the system and the information that they'll have. Travel advisory warnings. Stuff like that. Closed circuit television on the parkway? Mm-hmm. They'll have those, you know, five minutes to the exit. They'll be taking pictures of you speeding down the parkway. And you can do the real time. They actually have, PennDOT has their website where you can actually go now and look at different views of real time, what's happening, traffic. So are you saying they're going to install the big electronic signs over the parkway? In certain areas, there will be some of them. They did it on part of the 309. And then we'll have the cameras. I don't either. Yeah. Well, it's new technology. The plans were formulated years and years ago. I'm not saying that's the reason. It's all new stuff. But don't forget, it runs nine miles. Some of it may be at the other end, not necessarily at our end. But it could be where you get on and off. I would think you're not going to have these at the Georgetown Township end because who are you going to notify of traffic issues? And they're not going to have the congestion at this end. It's going to be towards Montgomeryville. Montgomeryville and all that area. So I don't think I saw, and what I saw was going to be anywhere in Georgetown Township. No. Are you going to be worried about sharing the closed circuit TV feed? For accidents and things like that, the police department will need access in order, and there's requirements in there for them to get the access. But those are small cameras versus a big sign, which is not what we want. We don't want a big sign that is. No. Provide popcorn. The gentleman making comments? You know. Lee Schwartz. Okay. Is there a motion? I don't know. Where are we? Is there a motion to approve the amendment? The video shared license agreement? Mm-hmm. Is there such a motion? I'll make the motion. I'm guessing that we really have to do it. It's not that we necessarily. Why wouldn't we? It provides information to the police and to other travelers on the highways, and it's not intrusive. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I think we do need, if we could for the next meeting maybe, this is something that maybe Stephanie could find out, is about those larger signs just to make sure that they're not within our area. Not that we want them all to be in Montgomeryville, but we don't want them all to be in Montgomeryville. We had a choice, though. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Thank you. If that's not too much trouble. No, I'll send a quick email. I can get that out to everybody. Central Bucks YMCA amended sketch plan. Several years ago, the Y received final land development plans, approval to make certain additions and improvements to their facility, 
one of the requirements was a fence and some other things, and I think there's been some practical issues that have arisen with respect to the installation of the fence and the potential loss of trees. Mr. Place is here on behalf of the Y to talk to the board about consenting to an amendment to that plan. Mr. Place? And why is Mr. Happ here? During the development process of the expansion of the YMCA, there was an agreement between Teversol and the Y to install a fence about another 100 feet from the existing fence. When it came time to install the fence, they realized they were going to have to take down a number of trees and install the fence actually on the Teversol property. When Teversol was notified of that, they didn't want that to happen. So what they've come up with for negotiations is to actually install six evergreen trees in another location. The fence was going to be along the north side of the project. Teversol would prefer to have six evergreen trees along the west side. It's as simple as that. There's nothing else involved. It's pretty much an agreement between two property owners. Eric, just for the audience, he missed all that. I second that. Because he wasn't at the microphone, so the people at home missed that. What was Teversol, when they were building, came in here and wanted some privacy there, and that's why they pushed for those trees. That's correct. Teversol wanted to see the fence extended to the west of the proposed lot. Now they see what it is. It doesn't offend them anymore, and they don't really want to go through that. They want the trees somewhere else, which has more of a screening aspect. That's correct. Tom, did you make a motion? Yes, I made a motion. Is there a second? And I seconded that motion and appreciate the why coming to the Planning Commission and explaining things so that we can hear, as we have in front of us, what the Planning Commission recommends so that we're all, everything in a row. So I appreciate the extra effort. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great night. Nice to see you, Andy. Sure. Sorry. Please take the, identify yourself, please. My name is Andy Happ. I'm a volunteer board member at the YMCA. I was the chairman of the expansion committee for the board, and I just wanted to thank the township for their help, guidance, and cooperation in what has been a very exciting enhancement to what we feel is one of the premier nonprofit organizations in our area. I'd encourage the supervisors, their consultants, the staff, anybody in the room to visit the Y and see the great things that we're doing there. And we congratulate you, Mr. Happ, on leading that committee to a wonderful expansion and improvement to that area of Doylestown and Doylestown Borough, and to creating the expansion for the service that the Y has provided to this community for so long and will continue to. So thank you for your hard work. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Just ignore us, Mr. Happ. It matters sometimes. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I said it again. Support of the growing community. Is that okay? Sorry. That was Barbara's resolution. Zoning hearing board for Panitz at 645 Alms House Road. The requesting variance, I would recommend we leave that matter to the zoning hearing board. I agree. Where is that located? Alms House Road. I know. The only comment I would have, I don't disagree with that, but I just want to make sure that somebody communicates as to the talks about boarding dogs. I don't want it turning into a kennel. It's a grooming thing. So just whoever is going to be attending on behalf of the town should make sure that you have them give instruction. This is not to be something where it becomes an overnight boarding activity. It does say boarding. It does say boarding. I think it was intended more as a temporary thing for the purpose of grooming and all that stuff because kennels and boarding can have an impact on neighbors. I think the zoning hearing board certainly will address that. No, it's a good point. It says boarding. It doesn't say just grooming. It says grooming and boarding. Can we send a memo with this? You can tell your zoning officer that attends the concerns of the township. Yes. Okay. Thanks. All right. Consensus is going to the zoning hearing board with a direction and comment to the zoning officer. Okay. Thank you. Bills list. Move for approval. That will be the bills list for October 4th, 2011. Thanks, Tom. And there's a second. All in favor of the bills list? Aye. Aye. All right. Announcements. Our next meeting is October 18th. It's here. 7 o'clock. Doylestown Township. Our supervisors will be meeting with the Ways and Means Committee on Thursday, 2 o'clock here for our first budget work session. The supervisors will then be on a road inspection at 4 o'clock. 
We're going to be closed on Monday, October 10th for Columbus Day. Leaf and yard waste recycling for Dawson Township residents only is October 15th, 9 to 11. Halloween, October 22nd, 2011, 10 to 1230 at Central Park. Got drugs uh, collection for med uh, unsafe medication, expired unused medication is Saturday, October 29th, 10 to 2 here at the Township Municipal Building. American Red Cross is celebrating or is asking us for our support in the Fire Safety Month. We're collecting 9-volt batteries. And Wells Road will be open tomorrow at 1 o'clock. I believe you have a question. The, the waste collection is off the New Britain Road, Central Park in off the New Britain Road, right? Mm -hmm. With Wells Road being open, we don't want people bringing their stuff to this Central Park as opposed to the entrance to Central Park off the of New Britain Road. Right. I'm not sure where it's going and, and, and on Dawson Township. Good question. Right. Can, Dick and Andy, back side of the park. Over towards New Britain Road. New Britain Road. Road side of the park. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good point. Keep. May I encourage everyone, including the viewers of the show, to, to come to the, come to the mic. You want them to hear you. <laughs> May I encourage everyone to please fill out a trash survey yes. by clicking on the website and the links at the bottom center of the page. So mm -hmm. please make sure you. Thank Give you. the EAC response back on the trash survey. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Seeing no other business, we are adjourned. Thank you very much.